and welcome to Storytime with YDRC. My name is Joanna and today we are going to be reading another Geronimo Stilton and Crivella von Cackle for Adventure. This one is called Ghost Pirate Treasure. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell your friends about this channel if you haven't already. Now without further ado, let's get started. I, Geronimo Stilton, have a lot of mouse friends but none as spooky as my friend Crivella von Kackelfer. She is an enchanting and mysterious mouse with a pet bat named Biteway. Crivella lives in a cemetery, sleeps in a marble sarcophagus, and drives a hearse. By night, she is a special effects and set designer for scary films, and by day, she's studying to become a journalist. Her father, Boris von Kackelfer, runs the home Fabimaus Funerals, and the von Kackelfer family owns the creepy Kackelfer castle, which sits on top of a skull-shaped mountain in Mysterious Valley. Yikes. I'm a real Frady Mouse, but even I think Creepella and her family are awfully fascinating. I can't wait for you to read this famously funny and spectacularly spooky tale. Sincerely, Geronimo Stilton. So here is Creepella's family, which we will meet throughout the story. Now, Ghost Pirate Treasure. A package from the sky. The streets in New Mouse City were dark and quiet when the clock struck midnight. Every mouse was snoring in bed, dreaming of cheese sandwiches. Almost every window in the city was shrouded in darkness. Only one light burned that night. Mine. Oops, I almost forgot to tell you who I am. My name is Stilton. Geronimo Stilton. I run the Rodents Gazette, the most famous newspaper on Mouse Island. My light was on because I was working late at the office on an important article. The subject matter of the article was making me a little nervous. Why? I'll tell you. This headline. New Mouse City's Greatest Criminals. You see, I'm not the kind of mouse who's courageous. Even the names of those mean rats scare me silly. In fact, my tail goes limp when I look at them. Barry Bad Guy, Roy the Rat Burglar, and Gary Gangster. Yikes. I felt faint, so I opened the window to get some air. A gust of wind cooled me off, and I lovingly looked down on my sleeping city. Then I noticed dark clouds moving across the sky. The air became cold. Without warning, heavy rain poured down from above. I watched the rain fall, lost in thought, when suddenly, bang, a package fell out from the sky. I let out a frightened scream, held out my paws, and caught the package. Then I looked up to see who had dropped it and saw two tiny bat wings zigzagging away through the raindrops. Flap, flap, flap. It was Bitewing, who fell upon tackle first bat. I closed the window and opened the coffin-shaped package. Inside were a note, a notebook, and a moldy piece of cheese that stunk like a sweaty sock after a football game. The note read, To my little cheese muffin Geronimo, here's my new adventure. Publish it immediately. I'm also sending you a delicious piece of 400-year-old cheese. Happy snacking! I was insulted. She expected me to eat a piece of cheese that was four centuries old? That stinky stuff is unsafe to eat, unless you're a mummified mouse. Then again, I could always add it to my collection of antique cheese rinds. I put the putrid cheese aside and picked up the notebook, which smelled just like cheese. Even so, I kept reading until the sun came up. It has an awful stench, but I mused to myself. My sister, Thea, a special correspondent at the Rodents Gazette, interrupted my thoughts. What's that awful smell? She squealed, walking into my office. I gave her the notebook and she read the story. The notebook has a dreadful smell, but it's a beautiful story, she said with admiration. My nephew Benjamin and his friend Bugsy Wugsy read it next. It has a dreadful smell, but it's a beautiful story, they both said. My coworkers read it while pinching their noses. It has a dreadful smell, but it's a beautiful story, they all agreed. When my cousin Trap entered the office, he sniffed the air. What a delightful smell, he exclaimed. Then he picked up the piece of cheese on my desk and ate it in one gulp. I think his stomach must be made of iron. 
Since everyone liked the story, I decided to publish Crabella's book. It is titled Ghost Pirate Treasure. You are holding it in your hot little paws right now. The only thing left for you to do is read it. I hope you like it as much as Trap enjoyed that stinky cheese. Ghost Pirate Treasure, written and illustrated by Creepella Von Cacklefer. A Difficult Night. Billy Squeakspear was having another restless night. Every time he was about to doze off, one of the 13 ghosts of Squeakspear Mansion would burst in with some ridiculous excuse. At midnight, Miss Dustmop, the ghost housekeeper, threw open the door. This room needs a little extra dust. I'll take care of it, she said happily. A moment later, Bob Woodmouse, the ghost carpenter, floated in. This is enough, he said, opening a desk drawer. I'll make it deeper. Between two and three o'clock, Dreamella Airhead, the ghost maid, came in and went out at least ten times. I can't find my glasses. They must be here somewhere, she said. She finally found them under Billy's pillow. Then, at three, Ted Trimmertail, the ghost gardener, decided to water the moss that grew under the night table. At four o'clock, Arf, the ghost dog, jumped on Billy's bed and licked his face. Billy was almost always grateful for Arf's attention, but not in the middle of the night. Thank you, Arf. Thank you, he said with a yawn. Now let me sleep. Arf seemed to understand. He curled up at the foot of the bed, closed his eyes, and began to doze off. A minute later, he raised his head and perked up his ears. Grrr, he growled. He was facing the yard. Billy tried to calm him down. Be a good boy, Arf, he said. There's nobody there. Nobody. But Arf ran to the window. He barked and barked and barked. Woof, woof, woof! Billy got up and looked out the window. In the darkness of the night, the yard seemed peaceful and quiet. He went back to bed, but... Woof, woof, woof! Arf, please be quiet, Billy pleaded. In desperation, he tossed some items in Arf's direction to get his attention. A copy of Blue Cheese and a Blue Heart, the new book he was writing. An, an raggedy old slipper. An alarm clock. A smelly sock. But Arf just kept barking and barking. Billy put a pillow over his ears and tried to sleep. Finally, the first timid rays of sunlight appeared over the tops of the mountains of the Mangi Yeti, that jumped in onto the Rancid Rat River and bounced into Billy's bedroom. Billy sighed with relief. It's about time, he exclaimed. Now my ghosts can all go to sleep, even the dog. Billy snuggled under the covers, hoping he would just get a few hours of sleep. He scratched his nose, closed his eyes, and was about to drift off when... Vroom, vroom, vroom. He sat up, listening. Outside, an engine was starting, stopping, and then starting again. Who would be here so early? Billy asked himself worriedly. He went to the window to see who was driving to his house at the crack of dawn. Instead, he saw a yard full of holes. W -w what? He stammered. Someone had dug big, deep holes all over his yard. His lawn looked like an enormous piece of Swiss cheese. Billy scratched his head. Who did this? He whispered. And more importantly, why? Do you know the one about the pirate? Dawn finally came and a tomb-like silence filled the mansion. The 13 ghosts who lived there slept deeply during the day, just like any respectable ghost would. They had to recover from the hard work they did at night. Normally, Billy would be resting during those peaceful hours, too, but not that morning. Even though he was very tired, he couldn't stop twisting and turning in bed. He was wondering about the holes that had suddenly appeared in his yard. Even counting the mansion's many bats didn't help him fall asleep. I can't figure it out, he blurted at bat number 1264. Maybe Uncle William can come up with an explanation. Billy got dressed and walked down the hall. It was as quiet as an empty tomb and as cold as the breath of the abominable snow rat. He got to the door of the boiler room and found it closed. A warning sign was nailed to the door. Do not disturb. Ghosts sleeping. Billy stopped, unsure. Finally, he gathered his courage and entered the kingdom of his great-great-great-uncle, William Squeakspear. 
He found himself in a round room with wall-to-wall -wall bookcases filled with very old books. His uncle was sound asleep in an old stuffed chair. His long whiskers were rolled up in curlers. Billy tried to gently wake him. Uh, uncle William, wake up. So something really weird has happened. But his uncle kept sleeping. Billy tried tickling his whiskers, but it didn't work. Finally, he took a deep breath and screamed as loudly as he could. Uncle William, wake up! The ghost jumped up like a sprig. He waved his walking cane and stammered, what happened? Is the house on fire? Is the enemy attacking? Charge! Then he noticed Billy and flopped himself down on the stuffed chair. What happened, nephew? Why did you disturb my sleep? He asked. Someone dug a lot of holes in our yard last night, Billy stuttered. Uncle William looked puzzled. He thought for a bit and then his face lit up. I've got it, he cried. They were probably looking for the treasure. Billy's whiskers trembled with excitement. Treasure? Why would anyone look for tre 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 treasure in our yard? Uncle William yawned. You really don't know much, do you, nephew? Don't you know the legend of Morgan Black Whiskers, the pirate who stayed in our house and left us a treasure? What? Billy asked in disbelief. His uncle nodded. As he continued his story, his eyes grew heavy with sleep. The gossips in Mysterious Valley were right. The pirate Black Whiskers was a good friend to your great 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 grandmother, Lady Squeakspear. That was 400 years ago, more or less. Lady Squeakspear? Billy asked. Yes his uncle replied, but no one has even found a trace of the famous treasure. That's, I will, that's all I will tell you now, nephew. It's time to sleep. But before I drift off, let me tell you some jokes. Do you know the one about... He told a few jokes, but as soon as he felt, but he soon fell into a deep sleep, as deep as a pot of cheese fondue. Billy quietly slipped out of the room and gently shut the door. Sweet dreams, uncle, he whispered. There's a real mystery afoot, he exclaimed, scratching his nose, and I know just the mouse who can help me solve it. I've got to call Creepella. So let's hear two of Uncle William's jokes. C student. What grades did the pirate get on his report card? High C's. How much did the pirate get for his corn? A buck and ear. A buck and ear. <laughs> Free fella, help me. A layer of moldy moss face powder, a light touch of snail slime lip gloss. Perfect, just the right stuff to start the day. Creepella von Cackleford grinned at a reflection in her, the mirror as she got ready for her work. She had a busy day ahead of her, interviewing a team of horror movie makeup artists. She couldn't leave the house until her fur was the perfect pale shade of a mummy. As she applied one last touch of shimmering caterpillar drool to her cheeks, her cell phone rang. Hi, Creepella. It's B -B Billy. There, there's so something worrying me. Dearest Billy Willy, don't you worry, Creepella said. Why n not? Billy asked. Because your sweet Creepella has everything under control, she replied triumphantly. Already? Of course, Creepella told him, and they are splendidly horrid. Well, that's good then, Billy said, then stopped. What are you talking about? Why, I'm talking about our marvelous costumes, of course, she said. C -c -c costumes repeated Billy, baffled. Exactly, costumes, Creepella cried. Lady Needletail did a fabulous job. For my rotted flower costume, we had quite a discussion on the position of the petals, but your costume. My costume? Billy interrupted. Your costume is perfect, Creepella assured him. You'll look great. What? Dressed as a garbage can, she finished. Wasn't that a truly disgusting idea? What are you talking about? exclaimed a shocked Billy. What do you mean? Creepella replied. Didn't I tell you, dearest Billy? I asked the most fashionable designer in Mysterious Valley to have her costumes ready for tonight's grand ball. The grand ball? Tonight? Billy, do I have to explain everything to you? Creepella said with a sigh. Today is the annual festival of melancholy, 
when all of Mysterious Valley celebrates the gloomiest day of the year. We'll start with a supper here at the castle and then go to the academy for the melancholy grand ball. I d -d -d don't know anything about it, Billy insisted. Rats and bats, Billy. Do you really want me to lose my patience? Prebella snapped. We all got our invitations weeks ago. Suddenly, Billy remembered. He searched furiously in his desk drawer and took out a very elegant purple card. His Excellency B. Squeakspear is invited to the Melancholy Grand Ball. It will be held a fortnight from tonight at the Shivery Arts Academy. Please remember, everyone must wear a costume. He had completely forgotten about it, probably because he didn't like parties much. Creepella, I don't think it's such a g g good idea, he stammered. I'm not a g good dancer. Nonsense! Don't say such foolish things, Creepella scolded. There's no excuse to miss the melancholy grand ball. Billy sighed. He knew he would never be able to change Creepella's mind. Fine, I'll come, he answered. But before I do, you have to help me solve a mystery. Creepella adored a good mystery. Her bright green eyes shone at the mention of the word. What is this mystery about, dearest Billy Willie? She asked eagerly. This morning, I found that mansion's yard full of holes, Billy explained. Uncle William says that someone is looking for Morgan Blackwhiskers treasure. Morgan Blackwhiskers, the most famous pirate in Mysterious Valley? That's the one, Billy answered. It seems he was a guest at Squeakspear Mansion long ago. Billy, this sounds like an awesome mystery, exclaimed Creepella. We'll figure out who dug those holes. With a little bit of luck, we'll also find the treasure. Thanks, Creepella, Billy said with relief. I knew I could count on you. Creepella ended the call and happily clapped her hands. This will be an absolutely spine-chilling horror story, she cried. She turned to her pet bat, Bitewing, who was flying around her head. Bitewing, get ready. After breakfast, we need to solve a mystery. Empty bellies at Cacklefur Castle. Creepella entered the dining room and found her whole family there. She quickly noticed that something very weird was going on. The strange von Cacklefur family was acting even stranger than usual. Her father, Boris, was pacing back and forth, mumbling. Poor baby looked like he was going to cry as he bounced on Madame Latoum's knee. Chompers, the meat-eating plant, looked limp and weak. Creepella's niece, Riverine, had an empty look on her face. And the twins, Sniff and Snap, weren't playing tr any tricks as usual. Instead, they looked sad. What's the matter? asked Creepella. It's a tragedy, Grandma Crypt answered. Chef Stewrat didn't make the stew for breakfast. Creepella was shocked. Chef Stewrat served the same thing at every meal, a big pot of stew made from ingredients that only the von Kaffelfers could appreciate and digest. Chef Stewrat burst into the room. I'm ruined, he cried. My cooking career is over. Tonight, everyone is supposed to prepare something special for the melancholy grand ball, but I just can't do it. I'm covering the furniture with silver cobwebs, interrupted Grandma Crypt. We have trick candles for the melancholy cake, said Snip and Snap. Boris nodded. I've composed a poem called Dark and Dreary Tombs to be read before dinner, he said. Dinner, that's my problem, exclaimed Chef Stewart. You see, I want to make an extra special stew for the dinner tonight. I think that's an excellent idea. Creepella said encouragingly. Yes, but to make a special stew, I need an extra special ingredient, whined Chef Stewart. I've tried everything, but nothing is working. If I can't make a special stew, I'm sunk. He handed Creepella a piece of oil-stained paper. Special ingredients for a very special stew. Extra stinky socks. Boring. Super oily handkerchiefs. Don't have enough. Fly larvae. Not enough flavor. Mosquito livers, too small. Grasshopper spleens, already in. Snail slime, did that last year. And Toad's tears, too delicate. Creepella tried to cheer him up. Don't worry, Chef Stewrat. I'm sure you'll find the right ingredient. Really? He asked, wiping a tear from his eye. Of course, she replied. 
In the meantime, why don't you make us a deliciously disgusting breakfast stew? We von Cacklefers can't live without it. Hunting for clues. Cribella had to hurry or she would be late for her meeting with Billy. She ran to the door but bumped into something in the hallway. Who left a pillow in the middle of the hall? She asked. That's not a pillow, said Shivering. Kafka! The von Cacklefers family's pet cockroach lay on its back on the floor with its legs in the air. Its tummy was so swollen it looked like a feather stuffed pillow. Cribella knelt down next to the cockroach. Poor Kafka, what's wrong? He's got indigestion, Shivering explained. She held up a box with the words, extra buggy beetle brittle on it. I wanted to give him a treat, but he gobbled the whole box in one bite. Creepella shook her head. You've got such a sweet tooth, Kafka. Get up and get moving and you'll feel better soon. Moments later, they were all in Creepella's Turbo Rapid 3000, zooming toward Billy's mansion. They found him in the yard, surrounded by holes. Kafka crawled around, sniffing. Shivereen started snapping photos. Creepella examined the holes as Bitewing flew around her head. Very interesting, she remarked. They look like they were dug by a professional. Well, what makes you say that? Billy asked. I took a class on mysterious wells, holes, and tunnels at the Chivalry Arts Academy, Cribella explained. The holes are all the same size, and the rocks are piled neatly beside each other. That's the mark of a real pro. Could the digger be d -d -d dangerous Billy asked, his whiskers trembling. Of course, teased Bitewing. Creepella decided to have a little fun with her friend Billy. You are in grave danger, she said in a spooky voice. Is it danger? Billy looked faint. Just kidding, Creepella said. This night digger is mysterious, that's all. Now, come with me. Where are we g -g 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 going? whispered Billy. To the Shivery Arts Academy, she replied. Somebody must be looking for Morgan Blas Black Whiskers' treasure. If we want to beat him to it, we've got to learn more about the treasure, and I know exactly who can help us. Auntie, maybe I should stay here with Kafka, Shivering piped up. He doesn't look well. Kafka was on his back again, groaning with a tummy ache. Good idea, but lend me your camera, Krivella said. Those photos you took might be helpful. Then, Krivella, Billy, and Bywing sped away in the purple hearse. What nobody knew, however, was that some spies behind a bush were watching their every move. Investigation at the Academy. Crivella's car screeched to a stop in front of the Chivalry Arts Academy. The first stop is Professor Dubloon's office, she exclaimed. Who's that? asked Billy timidly. He teaches pirate history, explained Crivella. He's an expert on just about everything there is to know about the pirates who sailed the seas. Here we have a map of Shivery Arts Academy. Up here we have the Leaning Tower, we have the Chilling Screams classroom, the Monster Science Lab, the Salon of Shrieks and Fainting, the Balcony of Whispers, and the Library of Horror Authors. Excited, Cribella grabbed Billy by the paw and dragged him through the halls of the Academy. Finally, they stopped at a door with a plaque on the front. Professor Dubloon, first class pyrotologist, expert on the history of pirates, privateers, and buccaneers. Creepella was about to knock on the door when it opened by itself. A friendly looking face with a dark with a black patch over one eye peeked out. Are you here already? asked the old rodent. He lifted his strange looking hat in greeting. I didn't expect you so soon. Y you were waiting for us? asked Billy. Of course, Dubloon replied. It's not every day that one gets to meet such an important pair of scholars. The scholars? What do you mean? Billy asked suspiciously. Dubloon frowned. Aren't you the Syllable Sisters, the famous interpreters of pirate language? Professor, you're such a kidder, laughed Creepella. Trumpeting treasures. I knew that voice. It's Creepella, the professor exclaimed, lifting his eye patch. Then he ran toward Billy. Actually, you do look a little different, the balloon said. That's Creepella, Billy said, pointing. 
Of course, the professor exclaimed, turning to Creepella. He winked at her. Then who is this less glamorous friend of yours? That's Billy Squeakspear, the writer, Lightwing piped up. Professor Devloon looks excited. Wondrous whales, a writer? He bought me an awesome pirate's biography, hasn't he? Actually, we're here because we need to learn about the pirate Morgan Blackwhiskers, Creepella explained. It seems he hid his treasure in my friend's yard years ago. Do you know anything about it? Hmm, let's see, he replied. Black whiskers, you say. Creepella and Billy followed the professor into his office. Strange old objects crowded the bookshelves. A yellowed sheet of paper was pinned to the wall. Office inventory. 24 encyclopedias about piracy. 12 essays about pirate raids, attacks, and abandoned ships. 117 ship's diaries of famous pirates. 113 old flags from pirate ships. 44 maps of treasures found by others. Eight hooks from history's most feared pirates. Three colored feathers from Surly Sam, the most famous pirate parrot. And one extremely rare treasure finder compass, which is broken. And here it is his office crowded with strange objects. The professor rummaged through the volumes of old dusty books until he finally found what he was looking for. Ah, here it is, Dubloon cried. According to the Encyclopedia of Pirate Journeys, Black Whiskers passed through the mysterious valley and was a guest at Squeakspear Mansion. Creepella nudged Billy. You see, we came to the right place. Dubloon kept reading. Because he was somewhat of gentle mouse, Black Whiskers gave a gift to the hostess. The beautiful Lady Squeakspear was a treasure from one of his pirate raids. Da, 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 does anyone know where it's hidden? asked Billy hopefully. The professor shook his head. No, my dear writer, no one knows. So the only one who would know exactly where Black Whiskers buried his treasure would be his ghost? Creepella asked. Unfortunately, Black Whiskers was the most forgetful pirate in history, the balloon said. Once he buried his treasures, he immediately forgot where he had put them. Then it could have very well been his ghost who dug all the holes in the yard, Creepella said, her voice growing louder with excitement. What a great story! A mysterious treasure, a pirate, and a ghost all in one! I'll write this greatest scoop of the century. Professor DeBloon frowned. Well, if my studies are correct, then Black Whiskers can't be the digger, he said. In fact, his ghost can only appear after the treasure is found. That's according to every legend I've ever read. Billy was discouraged. There's no solution, he said with a sigh. But Creepella wasn't disappointed. Don't worry, Billy Willie. We'll find the treasure, she promised. Then the ghost of that famous pirate will appear and I'll get my scoop. All we need to do is figure out who is digging up your yard. All right, so that's where we're going to stop for today. We're halfway through Creepella von Kackelfer and Geronimo Stilton in the Ghost Pirate Treasure. If you guys like the first half of this book, like, subscribe, and tell your friends about this channel if you haven't already. And that'll be all for today. So thank you for listening and bye.